The Bob Knight Show, an inside look at Indiana University basketball. Brought to you by American Fletcher National Bank, where the advantage is yours. By Federated Insurance, Federated writes it right. By the financial professionals at Payne Weber. By Indiana Bell, an Ameritech company, helping you communicate. And by H.H. Gregg, Indiana's largest appliance in electronic superstores. We welcome you back once again. I'll tell you folks, it's always fun to win. This has been a, a hectic week. Pressure's all the way. Minnesota early in the week. And uh, if anyone had told me that we'd gone through the last four games, Coach, with a total margin of... How do you uh, like my shoes? I think your shoes are terrific. I think they're really great. You've had those on both. Those, uh, those are your good luck shoes now, aren't they? I, I forgot my shoes the night we played Illinois. And so I wore these shoes. And we get a little shot of my shoes. I mean, they aren't much to look at, but they're comfortable and they wear well. <clears throat> and we won a lot of games in these shoes so far. Four games by a margin. So I had to wear these shoes that night. And, and we're getting ready to play Minnesota. And my son Patrick comes in the locker room. And I got on a pair of nice FootJoy shoes. You know, now Adidas makes these shoes. And I say that, you know, they're not much to look at, but they really are comfortable. And so, uh, Patrick, I got on these FootJoy golf teaching shoes that uh -huh. Sam Carmichael got for me. And Patrick looks at my shoes and he said, I wouldn't wear those shoes if I were you. <laughs> I said, what these shoes got to do with how we play tonight? He said, well, we've been playing pretty well, but we've been wearing those black shoes over there. So I put these black shoes on. And with about three minutes to go in the game, I told Patrick, go in the locker room, get my other shoes. Patrick looked at me and shook his head, and he said, no. He said, you want them, you go get them. He said, we won four in a row with those. Keep them on. He said, we'll be all right. So it pays to listen to your son once So more. Garrett goes to the free throw line with three seconds to play. And Patrick walks up and said, I told you to wear those shoes tonight. And I said, Garrett hadn't made a free throw yet. Pat said, we're going to win by two. So I wore these shoes again today. Well, you just totally what do you destroyed. you think of my socks? I think the socks are great, too. But you've just totally destroyed any entry that I had to get into this thing for this week. Hey, I Let's, really don't uh, care. I'm I so tired. Don't. There's another really good shot of my shoes, and, and they're, they're nice shoes, nice socks, and a nice pair of feet. I'm so tired that I don't care uh, uh, what we talk about. I don't care. We can get away from the shoes now. That's enough on the shoes. I don't care what we talk about. Uh, I don't care if, if you talk about the whole show. I don't care what your entry is uh, to this show. Um, if we don't, if, if, if we just talk about roses, that'd be fine with me. If we, well, just, if we just talked about something that, that is a beautiful thing for all of us to enjoy, something as simple as the American <laughs> rose, uh, I'd be tickled to death, Chuck. Got a letter on that. We'll, we'll get to that. Well, later what would on. you like okay. to talk about? Now let's talk about Iowa. Let's talk. Go ahead. About you, you asked me a long question. Well, I really did. I, you know, I wasn't listening. I know, I know you were. Uh, if someone had told you about three weeks ago that you'd play four games and win all four of those games by a margin of 14 points, uh, what would you have thought at that time? Yeah, I said, that's good. Yeah. I said, let's win. I mean, I, if you'd have said we lost them by a margin of 14 points, I said, that's bad. But if you're going to let us win them, that's good. If we win our next four by 14 points, Chuck, bring them on. I agree. I agree with you. All right. Okay. What did we win so, by 14 points? We won by nine well, the yesterday. Well, it was, it was two, one, and, two, and nine. So that we just won by fun. one up at Wisconsin, yeah. mm -hmm. didn't we? Let me tell you something about those three games. That, that would really, this may be the only interesting part of the whole show today, Chuck. But yesterday, and it really wasn't yesterday, uh, Bernie Sowers likes us to say yesterday and last night's game and everything because we were taping this show on Saturday. And so he gave me a reminder before to talk about yesterday and so forth today, but I'm just too tired to, to be quick enough to say yesterday when it's really today, and this is Saturday and you're watching on Sunday, but I'm supposed to make believe that it's Sunday, and, and but it isn't. This is really Saturday, so you think it's Sunday and we'll go from there, and I don't think Bernie will care. Bernie's a big IU fan and he's glad we won too, so that'd be all right, okay. Chuck. Okay, all right, okay. So on yesterday's game, 
Saturday's game or whatever it was, today's game, whatever, the Iowa game. All right. Quinn Buckner and I are walking from the coach's locker room. And, and uh, <clears throat> I think the fans would be interested in this. Hold this up here a second, Chuck. For, uh, forget about this being a court here. But here's Assembly Hall. And, like, imagine this is the playing floor right here at Assembly Hall. And, and down off this corner in a little corridor, there's a little coach's locker room right here. And we spend more time in here than MacArthur spent in the tunnel on Corregidor, uh, believe me. And, and there's a little door here. You go out this little door. It's a hallway. It's all the way around, like this. And right in here is a little door that goes in another hallway. And then here's the player's locker room in here. The players are really happy that the coach's locker room is over here and the player's locker room is over here. They like that arrangement. They really are big on this setup. So Buckner and I are walking out the door. And we get here, in this big wide hallway. We're walking side by side and we get here. And, and I say, Quinn, I'll tell you something about these last three games. I said, these kids have really done a heck of a job playing these last three games. They're in a position now that we wanted to be in after having lost to Iowa the first time. When I went into the locker room after the first Iowa game, I told the players that we had uh, won five games and now lost one to Iowa, and we've got eight games to play between now and getting another chance to play Iowa. So let's win those eight games. Let's really make that an objective. And then I think three very difficult games for us were going to be and turned out to be Northwestern, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Our kids are saying to themselves, geez, we, we beat these teams easily the first time. We can't lose to them. We, and there's a little thing about playing not to lose and playing to win. And in the Iowa game, we really played to win right off the bat. We were sharp. We had, and we know that we've got to play. And, and so many things went into those those three games. And I thought that our guys just did a great job. And, and Garrett and Thomas were exceptionally good through those three games when Steve wasn't shooting very well. But then Steve goes 15 for 52 in that stretch. And that really has to make it tough for us offensively. And, and that, that's a 15-point-a-game differential right there. And I think with uh, uh, Steve's play against Iowa, that's a tremendous credit to him. I mean, a great competitive kid comes back, scores 24 points against a very tough team, having struggled to get to that, mm -hmm. that point. So as I was talking to Quinn, I talked about uh, what a good job these kids had done not to stumble. Now, we almost did. I thought we caught Wisconsin playing really well. You know, the Northwestern game, we brought about our own demise a little bit. When we went up by 11, and I thought we had the game at a point about seven minutes to play, and then we let it slip back. And yet it wasn't a game that I think we were in danger of losing. They make a three-pointer at the buzzer. And then the Minnesota game, we easily could have lost the Minnesota game. Minnesota, I was explaining to Quinn, you get going, and you can't break the thing open, mm. and can't break it open, and you can't get a spread, and then all of a sudden they make some plays, which is what they did. It wasn't that we didn't make plays in the tail end of the Minnesota game. We did, but they must have hit maybe six difficult shots to stay either tied or a point ahead of us. So this team, uh, I think, to this point, just deserves a tremendous amount of credit for, for staying in there. I think we've made some great improvement in that regard. Last year or the year before, I don't think we'd have won the three games that we just won leading up to the Iowa game. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. We'll talk and show some video of yesterday's game with Iowa after we pause for this. locker room in a towel. Coach, we'll get right into the highlights. Chuck, you look awfully good today. <laughs> really do. Well, thank you. No, you thank just you look much. good. You oh, look good. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. And, and okay. don't look nearly your age. You no. look good. <laughs> okay. 29-21, about eight minutes left in the first half. And in this first half, Coach, I don't think there's really 
I, I don't think you can fault the play of Indiana anywhere in this game. Well, I think they all played well. We got a really big lift from Joe Hillman coming off the bench. I think it's the best he's played for us. Uh, we got a nice pass from Callaway there. That same pass a little later in the game would have been a really big bucket for us, but we threw it away. A Thomas to Garrett pass. There, Callaway uh, completed the pass. And then go back to Hillman. Hillman, I think, it has got some abilities to really do some things for us positively. And uh, hasn't played as well as I had thought he would play. But now he really came today uh, and did a heck of a job in the ball game today. We did a good job going after the ball on the boards. We rebounded about even with Iowa. Chuck, in this game, after uh, losing 46 to 19 on the boards the last time that we played. So that made a big difference in, the, in this game. I think the rebound swing was 39-37, something like that. Yes, it was. And here we're playing against uh, 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 Iowa where uh, we missed a couple of free throws in here. Uh, we missed a couple toward the end of the game that would have made a big difference for us. Uh, Iowa missed some in the first half. But in this segment of play, I thought our defense was really good. We went from a seven or eight point lead and we gave Iowa uh, the last half we played against Iowa uh, really good move by Keith Smart he did a great job taking the ball on the bucket in the first half uh, and had very very good judgment there's a lob pass that they'd scored on us earlier and Garrett and Isle did a very good job taking that away from them um, the first time we played Iowa the score at the half was like 44 to 42 and in the second half, uh, they score like 57 points against us, Chuck. So the last half against Iowa, they had gotten 57 against us. And what did they get in, in this game? I think they had 26 or 7 at the half or something like that. So we went almost from, uh, uh, from them getting uh, 56 or 7 points the last half to getting just 27 in this half. So our defensive play was much better. And then... They score 48 in the second half because they are a very explosive team. And in, in scoring uh, that well in the second half, I think a little bit of it was that we got kind of tired toward the end. Uh, they've got a very, very uh, uh, strong and deep lineup. Uh, they go to a lot of people. We even slowed down a little bit taking the ball out of bounds against the press. And I didn't think we're nearly as sharp in the latter part of the ball game as we were throughout the game. But Again, in, in this game, uh, we had 13 turnovers all told, which is what we had at Iowa City, and they just had 14, so they were games played, I thought, uh, by kids going at it extremely hard uh, for the whole course of the game, and not a lot of sloppy plays made, some good defensive plays made by, by each team, and, and not many careless plays made uh, resulting in turnovers. Uh, Iowa does a very good job of changing defenses. Uh, Joe Hillman draws a foul there. We wanted to try to drive the ball a little bit, Chuck, to get to the free throw line, and, and I think that, that helped us over the course of the ball game. We end up uh, uh, shooting 22 free throws, however, and we were hoping to shoot 30 in the ball game, and Iowa shoots 21, and, and uh, so we're kind of even uh, from that standpoint. Uh, we, as I said, uh, just made a, a very, very good change from the rebounding totals. You know, I, things can really change from one game to another. Like, we get out-rebounded 46 to 19 at Iowa. And we had a, a scoring change of 50 points against Northwestern, as an example, and 37 uh, points against Wisconsin. But here today, we had a swing of almost 25 rebounds in the game. And uh, it, it, games aren't the same. Every game is different, and every game is going to bring about different responses from both teams. And, and the teams can be, uh, can be fairly close, and one plays a little better than normal, and, and, and maybe the better team plays a little better, and the poorer team doesn't play as well, and now you've got a big differential. And sometimes in a situation like that, things really snowball. But then you get the poorer team playing a little better and the better team not playing quite as well, and then it becomes a real struggle. And if the poorer of the two teams can maintain what it's doing and can, can keep an approach 
that uh, uh, enables them to score and, and not give up things, not, not make a lot of mistakes, then it oftentimes can take it into a situation where it has a chance to win it. Does a game such as the game yesterday against Iowa enable you to add to your, to your teaching values? That, that Can you take that video back to those players uh, and, and keep reminding them of the intensity they showed there? Is, well, does that make a difference? We'll do that a little bit, and we'll talk to them about the difference, and we'll show them the start of the ball game a little bit. We'll take out a few plays where we, where we stop uh, Iowa defensively and where we got what we wanted to get uh, offensively. We're, we're a team that, that really needs to hit uh, on all cylinders when we're playing. I mean, I, I don't think that we can uh, just go out and, and, and uh, attack from two spots. I mean, we got to, and that's the same thing with what we do defensively. We had a couple of times where guys were slow getting back down the floor and didn't do a good job uh, picking up Armstrong. And when that happens, uh, baskets uh, resulted. Um, but by and large, I thought in, in this ball game, we did a good job against Iowa inside. We gave up some baskets the first time. Iowa is a very, very good secondary break team. And by secondary break, I mean they bring the ball down the floor, they penetrate to the foul line. If they don't have the layup or the shot on the pass from the foul line, then they pass the ball, but they keep moving toward the bucket. And, and maybe on the third pass, they get a, they get a score. They're probably as good as, uh, a team as there is around in secondary break. And, and they did some scoring against us in that regard. All right. We want to return here in just a moment to talk about a couple of things, including the upcoming game this week, but one that's very dear to Coach Knight. We'll be back in just a minute. We'd rather have count us down than Terry. Than Terry, no, except you. Terry does. You get a little Terry, impatient. Well, she's a lot better looking than I am, and she does a great job counting us down. Let's don't uh, let's don't waste time jabbering here. I didn't here. think that we no. were wasting no. time jabbering. I right. thought that we were paying Terry a very nice compliment. Terry, I'd throw that thing at Chuck if I were you. Uh, you have sent um, a letter to many people. Uh, it went out just uh, around the middle of January uh, from the Indiana University Libraries Endowment Fund. You're really behind this because you're well, trying to raise some... we've been involved with the place. library for a long time. It's a special project of the basketball team. And all of you Indiana people out there, and I hope some of you that were at that, uh, at that luncheon uh, up in Indianapolis before the season when I asked you all to send me $100 are listening too because I haven't gotten very many of your $100 and there ain't going to be any luncheon next year unless I get a few more $100. Uh, than I got. Uh, it's awful easy thing for it. Bernie, have you sent me $100 yet? Not yet. Then get it to me or there ain't going to be any TV show next <laughs> Sunday either. Uh, hey, $100 for all of us that have gone to school and, and are working and have gone, particularly gone to Indiana and derived the benefits from that. Those people that were at lunch and get that into me. And that means you, Laskowski, uh, get that $100 to me and the rest of you players out there that haven't sent it to me. I want that and I want it this week. And the rest of you, let's get behind the university library and let's support the thing, because that's a project that the basketball team has. The players want it done, I want it done, uh, we all want to get that thing done. We want to really help the library, and I think our idea with the library is that it's simply used by more people at the university than anything else. The students use it, um, the faculty uses it, uh, the Bloomington Faculty Council uses it, and we certainly want to try and help them whenever <laughs> we possibly can. <laughs> Thursday night at West Lafayette. Make your checks out to the library fund and okay. send them to me. And Chuck's going to be back and talk to you about something else. And, and I got it going. Okay. It's really been nice uh, being with you today on uh, on a half hour with Burn. Okay. Congratulations on the wins, and we'll see you this week. Good luck on these games Peace, coming brother. up. Okay. All right. Back in just a moment. say you can't deduct all the interest on car loans anymore? American Fletcher says you can. It's only fair to at least advise you folks out there. The reason why he wanted to leave early tonight, his son Patrick is playing uh, a game tonight. He doesn't get too much of a chance to watch Patrick play, and I know he wants to become as much involved in his game as is possible, as a spectator, incidentally. And so he's on his way, and he's got about 40, 45 miles he has to drive before uh, he can get to the site of that game. Let me leave you with a final word here, and of course, don't forget Thursday night at West Lafayette, Indiana versus Purdue, and then it's next Sunday 
Sunday afternoon, another network game, Indiana at Illinois. Uh, you'll be seeing very soon uh, promotion, marketing information, merchandising information on player cards, IU player cards, like, like the baseball trading cards. Uh, this is something that has never been done, at least to my knowledge, in basketball, at least in this area. And these cards will be coming out very soon. Watch us here on the Bob Knight Show will give you information as to when and where they are available. The playing cards will become available before this season is over, so you stick close with us and we'll give you the information. So that's it. It's been an interesting and an unusual program today. Always is with him and we hope that you've enjoyed it. Big wins this week, and we hope that Indiana can continue the rest of the way. And we thank you folks for being with us. Don't forget, next week, same time, on the Bob Knight Show right here, and the big contest at West Lafayette. Important for both teams, West Lafayette, of course, uh, with uh, Purdue playing at Illinois this coming Monday night, and that could have a lot of influence on that Thursday night game. So nonetheless, we'll see you next week, same time. Until then, so long for now. The Bob Knight Show, an inside look at Indiana University basketball. Brought to you by American Fletcher National Bank, where the advantage is yours. By Federated Insurance, Federated writes it right. By the financial professionals at Payne Weber. By Indiana Bell, an Ameritech company, helping you communicate. And by H.H. Gregg, Indiana's largest appliance in electronic superstores. Some of Coach Bob Knight's guests will receive a gift from Moen. Moen features the Pulsation Showerhead, which lets you choose the water flow you like, from brisk and pulsating to gently soothing. Look for the Pulsation Showerhead by Moen.